This video is going to show you how to build Classroom Clock, an Arduino controlled DIY clock optimized for teachers with customizable features such as an additional digit that keeps track of the block or period, an especially useful feature for rotating block schedules, LED digits that fade from green to red as the end of the period or block approaches so that a single glance can convey the remaining class time. A countdown timer triggered several minutes before the period ends. A useful feature for signaling cleanup time. Other light effects that can be triggered during lunch, free periods, after school, or special occasions like birthdays, holidays, or Mardi Gras. The possibilities are endless. How will you program the classroom clock? The classroom clock is comprised of eight laser cut layers that house an Arduino Nano, the circuit's brain, a chrono dot, a real-time clock used to very accurately measure time, and NeoPixels, individually addressable RGB LEDs. Let's get started. The first step is to laser cut the layers. The clock was originally designed in Autodesk Fusion 360, but the SVG files for laser cutting can be found in the GitHub repo. Inkscape is a free vector program that can be used to modify the files. Cut the following layers. One bottom, one bumper, one NeoPixel assembly layer, two of the digit layer with the small hole for the bolt, one digit layer with a hexagonal hole for the nut, one digit layer with a hole for the magnet, one acrylic top, and the circuit case. For the NeoPixel assembly layer, the text should be etched, not cut, onto the surface. Similarly, the holes in the acrylic layer should be etched on the bottom, not cut. I used an Arduino Nano for this project. To fit it horizontally on the proto board, I snipped the front two headers and soldered the microcontroller to the board. Next, I soldered four wires to the Nano. A wire to analog 4 and analog 5 for I squared C communication, and a wire to ground and 5 volts. The other end of these wires will be soldered to the chrono dot at a later point. Next, I clipped the headers of the Nano to make room for the chrono dot. Finally, I soldered a 470 ohm resistor to digital pin 3 on the Nano, and the other end to a clear spot on the protoboard. I made sure to snip the legs. The chrono dot is an extremely accurate real-time clock module. We aren't going to need the pins for the battery through RST, so snip these headers. Attach the chrono dot to the underside of the protoboard facing the opposite direction from the Arduino. If you're following this design exactly, the remaining headers should occupy column I, rows 4 through 8 of the protoboard, next to the four wires of the Nano in column J. SDA should be soldered to analog 4, SCL to analog 5, 5 volts to VCC, and ground to ground. To power the circuit, begin by screwing two wires into the positive and negative terminals of the DC power adapter. Assemble the three layers of the circuit case to help align the wires on the proto board. Solder the wires to the board and snip the leads. Next, solder a wire from the ChronoDot's VCC to the positive power adapter terminal and the ground of the ChronoDot to the negative terminal. Then it's time to add the 1000 microfarad capacitor. The arrow on the capacitor points to the negative lead. Attach this lead to the negative terminal and the other leg to the positive terminal. The next step is to assemble the NeoPixels. Cut the NeoPixel strip apart. There should be one pixel per hole for a total of 32 NeoPixels. Tin the copper pads to make soldering easier. Use the NeoPixel positioning layer to hot glue NeoPixels in place. The NeoPixel layer has numbers etched into the wood to indicate the order in which the LEDs must be wired together to match the code. When gluing or soldering, make sure the NeoPixel arrow always points to the next pixel. When you're done gluing, flip the layer over and verify that the NeoPixel arrows point in a continuous path following the etched numbers. Now you can recreate the NeoPixel strip. Cut, strip, tin, and solder wires between the LEDs, ensuring that data always goes to data, 5 volts to 5 volts, ground to ground. The laser etched plus and minus symbols, representing 5 volts and ground respectively, help to ensure you're always soldering the right pins together. Continue soldering the pixels together following the numbered path. When you're done, it's time to solder the NeoPixels to the circuit. 
The data pin on the NeoPixel strip should be attached to the 470 ohm resistor. 5 volts in ground should be connected to the DC power adapter's positive and negative terminals. It's time to assemble the clock. Glue the bumper to the bottom layer. Glue the bolt digits together and glue the hex nut digit layer on top. I laser cut acrylic washers and fed bolts through the bottom in order to stack the panels in the following order. Bottom and bumper, both of which are glued together, the NeoPixel assembly layer, and the two digits that had already been glued to the hex nut digit. Once the above layers are stacked, twist the quarter nut jam hex nuts on top so that they're aligned with the holes in the wood panel and tighten the bolts from the back using a 7 nut driver. This is a good opportunity to sand and stain the edges of the clock. Now it's time to super glue the magnets into the final digit layer circular holes. I started by cleaning the magnets with alcohol and scratching the surface to better adhere to the glue. I applied super glue along the edge of the wood panel and pushed in the magnets. Next I put super glue on the magnets and fit the acrylic layer on top. The acrylic layer should have etched circles on the bottom to help align the layer perfectly on top of the magnets. When the glue is dry, the top wood layer and the acrylic can slide on and off of the clock, exposing the Arduino and circuitry if needed. Hooray! The last step! You can download the Arduino code from GitHub. You'll need to install several libraries and set values in the code so that the clock accurately tracks your schedule. See the Instructable page for additional instructions. Have fun!